Remember that double fold edge we talked about earlier? In sewing, you'll discover there are always several right ways to do just about everything. Also, there are a number of techniques that are basically the same but have different names depending on the end use. A double fold hem is a good example. Earlier we used it as a shirt tail hem. Now we're going to make it wider and use it as a casing. This is one of the ways you can finish a waistline on pull-on pants. Now maybe you don't like to wear pull-on pants in public, but they make great pajamas. This is just one way to make a casing. Sometimes the casing is a separate waistband, but on this pant the casing is attached to the top of the pants and is what we call a cut-on casing. Turn the first fold under about 1 4th inch and press. Then turn under the band, the width of your elastic plus a quarter inch and press again. From the inside, start edge stitching the casing about an inch away from the center back seam. Stitch all the way around the waist and stop about two or three inches before you return to where you started. Remove the garment from the machine. Cut a length of elastic that fits comfortably around your waist when the elastic is stretched. It can be anywhere from one to five inches shorter than your waist circumference. Before you cut it, make sure it will also fit over your hips as I described earlier. Attach a bodkin to the end of your elastic. A bodkin is a tool used for getting inside narrow passages. It can be as simple as a large sized safety pin, or it can be a tool designed specifically for pulling cords or elastics through a casing or turning fabric tubes right side out. To use it, pin one end of the elastic to your garment so you won't accidentally pull it all the way through. Then pull the other end through the casing with the bodkin. When you get to the opening, pull the bodkin out from the casing along with several inches of elastic. Cut a square of fabric or ribbon, place it under the elastic end and abut the other end to it centered over the fabric. On the machine, stitch the two elastic ends together through the fabric. This way you don't overlap the elastic and get a bulky lump inside your casing. Next, pull the elastic inside the casing and smooth the puckers away from the open section so you can machine sew it closed for a perfectly neat waistband. While we're here, let's not forget about adding a drawstring. Earlier, you saw the elastic that comes with the drawstring already inside. But while casings are fresh in your mind, I'll show you how easy it is to add a drawstring to a casing. A drawstring can go in many places. It can close a book bag, hold up your pants, it can make the neckline fit on a top. Usually the drawstring runs through a fabric tunnel called a casing. And as we just reviewed a casing, it's essentially the same as a double fold edge. So what is often used as a hem can also be used as a waistband, cuff, or neckline. One thing about a drawstring is that there has to be an opening for the string tails to get outside the casing. There are several ways to do this. One is to leave the center front seam open so the tails can exit and tie in front. Another way is to sew two buttonholes, one for each tail end, on either side of the center front seam in the area that will become the casing after it's sewn. Decide how you will want the cord to exit. Sew the buttonholes before turning the casing and stitching it. If you're going through the seam, fuse the seam allowance down with an iron-on tape this way it doesn't get caught up when you're threading the cord through. I'd say we've all been adequately wasted. See you next time.